Hi crochet friends! Today I'm going to show you how to make a pair of mummy's mittens. For this project you will need a 5.5 millimeter hook. I'm using my Clover Amour hook. And you will need some chunky weight yarn. I'm using Drifter Chunky from King Cole. Each ball has 100 grams or 3.52 ounces and there's about 170 yards or 156 meters per ball. This is a cotton wool acrylic blend yarn and I really like using it. it works up really pretty. The shade is called Toronto. It's code 2169. And you can substitute Kinkle Subtle Drifter Chunky for this yarn as well, which is a more solid colored yarn. To begin, create a slip knot. And chain 12 stitches. Now beginning in the second chain from the hook, so we skip the first one and working under the back loop or this top loop here, single crochet in each chain across. At the end of row one, you have 11 single crochet stitches. Chain one, turn your work, and work one single crochet in each stitch across under the back loop only. So this one right here at the back, the one further away from you. So work one single crochet in each up to the last stitch. When you reach the last stitch, work under both loops, so the front loop and the back loop. And make one single crochet. Chain one. At the end of row two, you have 11 single crochet stitches. Turn your work, and we're going to repeat the last row again, and we're going to repeat the last row again. We're working one single crochet in each stitch across up to the last stitch under the back loop only. So one single crochet under the back loop only, all the way across to the last stitch. And for the last stitch, we work under both loops, so under the front and back loop of the stitch, and make one single crochet. Chain one. At the end of row three, you have 11 single crochet stitches. Now repeat this 
So working one single crochet under the back loop only all the way across to the last stitch and then under both loops for the last stitch. I'll meet you back here after we have 23 rows in total. Once you have your 23 rows, you can count that if you want to double check. See how it's got the rib? This is two, this is two, 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 all the way across to the end. And when you only have half of a mountain, that's one. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23. At the end of row 23, chain one and fold the cuff in half, bringing row one, which is this one here on the far side with the string, the yarn end, on top of row 23, like so. And we're going to slip stitch through both layers. And to do that, we're going to go through the back loop of the last row, which is row 23. So this one, like we did for the whole project. And we're going to pick up the first loop here that matches across ways from row one. Now we're going to slip stitch through those two and do this all the way across. So under the back loop and under one loop of the first one, the first row, and slip stitch through all the way across to seam the cuff. If you find this too difficult, you can simply close your cuff at the end of your project using a whip stitch seam. and you will have 11 slip stitches at the end of row 24 for the cuff. Now we're going to start working the mitten itself. So chain one and work one single crochet for every row end of your cuff, except for the last one we just did. So we're going to have 23 single crochets when we finish this round. If you're a little bit off on where you put them, that's okay, as long as you have 23 all the way around. So one single crochet for each row end. I like to work under one loop. And then I like to find this hole at the other, at the peak of your mountain. So up to this part here, that's the top of the mountain. That's what I call it anyways. And there'll be a little hole at the end. That's where I like to put the other one. So under the one loop and into that hole. So work your single crochet stitches all the way around so that you have 23 by the time you're finished this round. Now when you get to the end, make sure you have your 23, so double check. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 
23. At the end of round one, you have 23 single crochet stitches. For round two, make one single crochet in the first stitch. And if you'd like to use a stitch marker, mark your first stitch. Make one half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Make two half double crochets in the next stitch. Make one half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. And two half double crochets in the next stitch. Make one half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. Two half double crochets in the next stitch. One half double crochet in each of the next four. Two half double crochets in the next. And one half double crochet in each of the last three stitches. At the end of round two, you have 27 stitches. For round three, we're going to make one half double crochet in every stitch around. So one half double crochet in each of the stitches around. At the end of round three, you have 27 half double crochet stitches. Repeat round three until you have nine rounds in total. So for six more rounds, work one half double crochet in each stitch around. I'll meet you back here after I've completed my nine rounds. For round 10, Work two half double crochets in the first stitch. Skip the next eight stitches. Place a marker in the eighth skipped stitch and in the next stitch, the one following the one with the stitch marker, make one single crochet and one half double crochet. 
Make one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And two half double crochets in the next stitch. One half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Two half double crochets in the next. One half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Two half double crochets in the next. One half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Two half double crochets in the next stitch. One half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Two half double crochets in the next stitch. And one half double crochet in the last two stitches. These skipped stitches are going to create the thumb hole for the mitten. And we'll come back to this section after we're finished the rest of the main mitten here. At the end of round 10, you have 26 stitches. For round 11, we're going to work one half double crochet in each of the first two stitches. We're going to work one half double crochet in the stitch that we marked with the stitch marker from the thumb hole section. We're going to skip that single crochet stitch that would be next in the row. Make one half double crochet in the next stitch the one after the single crochet, and one half double crochet in each remaining stitch around. At the end of round 11, you have 26 stitches. For the next six rounds, work one half double crochet in each stitch around. So from round 12 to round 17, work one half double crochet in each of the stitches. After you've completed your 17 rounds, we'll begin round 18. And for round 18, we're going to be shaping the mitten towards the tip of the fingers. 
We're going to work a half double crochet, two together. All the way around. So for every two stitches, we're going to make them one stitch. So half double crochet, two together. all the way around. Make the half double crochet two together, yarn over your hook, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over the hook, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all five loops to complete the stitch. At the end of round 18, you have 13 half double crochet stitches. For round 19, work one half double crochet in each stitch around. At the end of round 19, you have 13 stitches. For round 20, we're going to work a half double crochet two together six times. And in the last stitch, work one half double crochet. 
chain one to finish off and leave a fairly long tail of yarn because we need to close up the top of the mitten. Pull that end through. You can move the top stitch marker now. Place your mitten on a flat surface with the thumb opening on the left side. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch to begin this round. Now locate the stitch the furthest to the right. It already has a stitch in it, but that's okay because we're using it for the thumb. So not this stitch that's right beside the rest of the mitten, but the one that you have a stitch in to the right of that. And slip stitch to join. Chain one. We're going to count this chain one as our first stitch and work one half double crochet in each stitch around, including the one that we had the stitch marker in. So place one in the stitch that has the stitch marker from when we created the thumb hole. You can remove that stitch marker now. And slip stitch to the initial joining stitch. So the first slip stitch of the round to join. Now this slip stitch is counting as a stitch. So we have the slip stitch and the chain that are counting as stitches, and then we have eight half double crochets. At the end of round one, we have 10 stitches in total. Chain one and work one half double crochet into the chain, that first chain there from the round before. Now place a stitch marker in that so you know it's the first stitch. And work one half double crochet in the next stitch, which is the first half double crochet of the last round. And then in each remaining half double crochet around. And remember, we're making this slip stitch that we have here. That was a, a stitch. We're counting that. So we need to work into that. So work into that slip stitch to make your last half double crochet. You will have 10 half double crochet stitches for round two. Repeat round two again. So slip stitch to join. And that's the first half double crochet you slip stitch to now. Chain one and make one half double crochet in the same stitch. Replace your stitch marker. That's the first stitch of the round and work one half double crochet in each stitch around. Slip stitch to the first stitch to join.
At the end of round three, you have 10 stitches. And for round four, we're going to make the same round again. So chain one, work one half double crochet in each stitch around. Remember to make one in the first stitch. Make one half double crochet in each stitch around. Slip stitch to the first stitch to join. your thumb is looking like so far. At the end of round four you have ten stitches. For round five work one half double crochet in the first stitch. Oops, sorry, for round five chain one, work one half double crochet in the first stitch. Replace the stitch marker. Half double crochet two together. Work one half double crochet in the next stitch. Half double crochet two together. One half double crochet in the next stitch. Half double crochet two together. And one half double crochet in the last stitch. At the end of round five, you have seven stitches. Remove your stitch marker. Slip stitch to the first stitch to join. And for this round, we're not going to work another stitch in the first stitch. We're going to skip that. So working into the next stitch, make a single crochet two together. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to repeat that around, make another single crochet two together, And a third single crochet two together. At the end of this round, you have three stitches plus that slip stitch that we had at the beginning. And we're going to chain one to finish off. Leave a Fairly long tail because we need to close up the thumb. Pull the yarn through. And this is how your mitten looks so far. Got lots of ends here we need to work in. Now to close up the top of the mitten. Thread that yarn end onto a yarn needle. Working under the front loop of each remaining stitch at the top, we're going to weave your yarn end in and out. So from one side to the other. Now 
I can pull to tighten and thread this through the center. I'm going to flip the mitten inside out for a moment so we can weave that in. Got to be careful you don't pick up a stitch on the inside like I did there. Let's see here. There we go. Okay, so we want to make sure that's nice and secure at the top. I like to weave it in in a few different directions. Try to stay on the inside of the mitten when you're doing the weaving so that it doesn't poke through on the front. I like to leave a little extra thread on the inside when I'm doing this, so I do weave in a bit more than you need to, just in case it ever comes loose. Then I have some thread that I can fix the mitten with if there's a hole or whatever, just so there's a little bit of the same color available. So weave it in as best you can, a couple different directions. If you feel more comfortable, you can create a little knot. And then continue weaving. And then your top of your mitten will be all secure. Now close up the top of the thumb hole. We do that in the same way. So working under the front loop of each of the remaining stitches, weaving one way and then the other. And then closing it inside the mitten and then threading it into the inside of the mitten. And then weave in your end on the inside. Now for the thumb, there's usually a bit of a gap where we joined here, and we can fix that with our yarn end. See, there's a little bit of an extra space in here, and I always tidy that up because I don't like how it looks. So 
So see right here where we have the inner thumb, so it would have been this section here. And I just like to close that up a little bit. You don't have to pull too tightly for this because you don't want to make it gather in this section of the mitten. And then if you don't like how big this hole is here, you can close that up a bit too. Okay, and then we can just take a peek, just make sure everything else is good there. And weave that in as well. We just have one more place to weave in. So take that final yarn end. We're going to weave that in on the inside of the mitten. So fold the cuff back and weave that on the inside. Don't pull too tightly because you don't want to buckle this part either. You want to keep it in its original shape. Thank you for watching my tutorial to learn how to make a pair of mummy's mittens. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Thanks so much and have a great day.